Hello, good day, and welcome to Encouragement and Prayer Ministries. I want to thank you for watching the video, sharing the video with your family and your friends, so together we can be an encouragement to others, and together we can share the gospel. Today I'm going to be reading from Psalm chapter 50, verses 14 and 15. But first I want to talk about who wrote this psalm. This was written by Asaph, who was, one, was a Levite and was a magician or a singer in the first temple who was assigned to be in charge of the singing in the house of Yahweh. Yahweh is a name of God. The Hebrew spelling of Yahweh is Y-H-W-H. -H. When you pronounce the word Yahweh, is as, it's as if you are breathing, first inhaling, and then exhaling. Now, Psalms 50 verses 14 and 15. Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving, and pay your vows to the Most High. Call upon me in the day of trouble. I shall rescue you, and you will honor me. The offering of thanksgiving. The Hebrew word for offering is Zah, Ba. It means to slaughter an animal. For our offering goes to God. Elohim, the meaning of Elohim is plural. It means supreme God. Let's look at verses 4 and 6 of chapter 15. He summons the heavens above the earth to judge his people, and the heavens declare his righteousness. But God himself is judge. For heaven and earth tells us about God and who he is. We can see God's righteousness in both heaven and earth. In verse 10 and 11 of chapter 50 of Psalms, for every beast of the forest is mine. The cattle are a thousand hills. I know every bird of the mountains and everything that moves in the field is mine. For every living creature created by God belongs to God. The word thanksgiving in Hebrew is to da. Invocation is an extension of the hand or adoration. Specifically, a choir of worshipers, confession, praise, and offering. Our offering is a sacrifice. Verses 8 to 11 of Psalm 50. I do not reprove you for your sacrifices and your burnt offerings. But continually before me, I shall take no young bull out of your house, nor male goats out of your folds. For every beast of the forest is mine, the cattle on a thousand hills. I know every bird of the mountains and everything that moves in the field is mine. So God will not take any offering. He wants us to give to Him what really belongs to Him. An offering to God is of our free will. The sacrifice is because of who God is, for He is supreme, with unquestioned authority, because God is the greatest, and the highest of excellence. He is ultimate and final, but know what is above the one true God. And our sacrifice makes amends, for our sacrifice now is not of bulls and rams or sheep but we are a living sacrifice because our love for God and our sacrifice we make a promise to God that he is Lord of all we recognize his ultimate authority our offer of thanksgiving and sacrifice calls and brings deliverance Isaiah 55, 6 says, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him 
while a bee is near. For to receive deliverance, we need to recognize who the deliverance is coming from. We call upon him. Let's read from Matthew chapter 12, verse 7. But if you had known what this means, I desire compassion and not a sacrifice, and you would not have, would not condemn the innocent. But God, our Lord Jesus Christ, He wants our love, because God loved us first, when we were still sinners. Let's read from 1 Chronicles 29, verse 18. And give to my son Solomon a perfect heart to keep your commandments, your testimonies, and your statues, and to do them all, and to build the temple, for which I have made provision. For it was David who had the heart to, to build a temple for God. He wanted his son Solomon to do what God would not allow him to do. All the provisions was made, the plans, what Solomon needed was a perfect heart for God. For with God, with Jesus Christ in us, we are given a new heart that is pure and clean. Let's look at Romans chapter 10, verse 10. What the heart a person believes, resulting in righteousness, and what the mouth he confesses, resulting in salvation. But we need to have the heart for God to believe, and through our confessing, of our sins, we are made alive through, our, through Jesus. We will be saved. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 10, verse 22. Let us draw near with a sincere heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. When we go to our Heavenly Father, we can have 100% faith that our hearts will be cleansed when we ask for forgiveness. And we will be washed with pure water, the water that flows from God Himself. Lord, Father, this is a time that we remember the, the offerings that was given before Jesus came and died for us. What they did out of the law, trying to, to please you. This was not enough. For we, for we needed a perfect offering, which Jesus became. He sacred himself selflessly. He took our place on the cross. There's a place of the guilty. So those who sincerely come to you, confessing of their sins, and asking for forgiveness, they will be saved this Passover week as people hear this message and they share this message with the others. It is my heart's desire that many will receive you as Lord, Master, and Savior through the confessing of their mouths and a sincere heart to live a life that is pure, holy, and sinless. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I want to give you the opportunity today that you believe that Jesus Christ is God, that He came to earth, sinless, died for you, and rose from the grave. Today, you can confess your sins and ask for forgiveness. I ask you to repeat after me as I pray. Heavenly Father, I acknowledge that the separation between us is because of my sin. I confess that I have sinned and have fallen far short of your glory. I thank you that you sent your Son, Jesus, to pay the penalty for my sin. I believe that he died on the cross for me. I believe that raised him from the dead. I am sorry for my sins and I ask you to forgive and cleanse me. 
I want to turn away from everything of Bible calls sin and receive Jesus as my Lord, Master, and Savior. Help me to love, serve, and obey you for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, Amen. I want to encourage you to grow in your faith. You need to read God's Word, the Bible, every day. Take time reading it, thinking about what His Word is saying to you. Ask the Holy Spirit to guide you and to reveal His message to you every day. And every day, take time in prayer, talking to our he your Heavenly Father, what's on your heart, what you don't understand, and take time to listen to what He has to say to you and to have fellowship with other believers who will encourage, who will strengthen you, who will make you sharp, so you will live the life that you are supposed to live that is pure, holy, and sinless. I'd like to invite you to attend services with me here at Victory Super. Our service time is every Sunday at 10 a.m. and again at 4 p.m. So let's go ahead and go inside and attend service become a part of the Victory family.